We know that the Mass is an immolative sacrifice, that is to say, the Mass is a renewal of the sacrifice of Calvary. This means that like Calvary, it involves the sacrifice of a victim, and that victim is Jesus Christ. In the offertory, the victim is offered and the sacrifice is directed to a definite end. In the consecration, Christ becomes present on the altar. The communion represents the destruction of the victim and the sacrifice. Therefore, these three components, offertory, consecration, and communion, are all necessary to complete the sacrificial action. The Mass is the sacrificial action that contains the sacrament of the Eucharist. It is at the consecration that the miracle of the Mass occurs. The bread and wine are transformed into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Every sacrament requires proper matter, form, and intention. The words of consecration are the form of the sacrament of the Eucharist. Prayer for the consecration of the bread in the traditional Latin Mass. Who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having raised his eyes to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye all and eat, for this is my body. Notice that the prayer begins, who the day before he suffered. The focus of the prayer is not on the eating of a meal, but rather on Christ's suffering. Notice also that Christ raises his eyes to heaven. He raises his eyes to heaven to signify that he is offering sacrifice to his Almighty Father. In the traditional Mass, the consecration is part of a larger prayer called the Canon. The word Canon means fixed rule of prayer. In the new Mass, the canon has been replaced by four Eucharistic prayers from which the priest can choose. The multiple options are an ecumenical feature that allows each priest to choose the Eucharistic prayer that best fits the faith of any given assembly. Depending on which Eucharistic prayer is used, between 60 and 80 percent of the traditional Mass has simply been discarded. Prayer for the Consecration of the Bread in the New Mass, Eucharistic Prayer Number 4. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. The form for the consecration of the bread, this is my body, has been retained in the new Mass. Note, however, that what is done takes place while they were at supper. Note also that Jesus never raises his eyes to heaven to offer sacrifice. It is not clear whether Jesus is instituting a sacrament or just eating the Paschal meal. All that is clear in Eucharistic prayer number four is, while they were at supper, Jesus said the blessing. The prayer tells us that Jesus was glorified by the Father and he loved his own. What does it mean to be glorified by the Father or to show love? This is non-specific ecumenical language that can mean whatever one wants it to mean. Prayer for the Consecration of the Wine in the Traditional Latin Mass In like manner when supper was done, taking also this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, 
he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye all and drink of this, for this is the chalice of my blood of the new and eternal covenant, the mystery of faith which shall be shed for you and for many unto the forgiveness of sins. Note how the prayer begins, when supper was done. The prayer emphasizes the fact that the actions of Christ were not part of the supper. What is done is a sacrificial act that occurs after the Paschal meal was over. The words mystery of faith are a profession of faith that the bread and wine are transformed into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Prayer for the Consecration of the Wine in the New Mass, Eucharistic Prayer Number 4. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Note that the words mystery of faith are no longer part of the formula. The words are still there, but they have been moved outside the consecration, and their meaning has changed. In the new rite, after the consecration is over, the priest proclaims the mystery of faith, to which the people reply, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. What is the mystery of faith? In the traditional Latin Mass, there is no doubt what the mystery of faith is. The mystery of faith is Christ's presence on the altar under the appearance of bread and wine. The Catechism of the Council of Trent teaches, The words mystery of faith, which are subjoined, do not exclude the reality, but signify that what lies hidden and concealed far removed from the perception of the eye is to be believed with firm faith. In the New Mass, the words mystery of faith no longer refer to the transformation of the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. The meaning has been changed to a gospel narrative. Christ has died, risen, and will someday come again. This is at least an implied denial of Christ's real presence in the Eucharist. It is interesting to note that the memorial acclamation appears to be taken from the Lutheran Book of Worship. Consider the similarities between the new Mass and a Lutheran service. Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. A clear profession of faith that the bread and wine are transformed into the body and blood of Christ would be an obstacle to ecumenism, and therefore it had to go. The fact that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and will someday come again is not much of a mystery but it is acceptable to non-Catholics. In the general instruction to the new order of Mass, just as in the Lutheran service, the words of consecration are referred to as the institution narrative. The phrase institution narrative is completely alien to Catholic theology. A narrative is a story. To call the consecration a narrative introduces a doubt is the priest offering sacrifice, or is he just telling the story of the Last Supper? This is the reason why the words mystery of faith had to be removed from the traditional consecration formula. A profession of faith would be out of place in the middle of a story. When a properly ordained minister uses proper matter and form to perform a sacrament, it is an external sign that he possesses the proper internal intention required to confect the sacrament. However, if a minister were to perform a sacrament in a setting that clearly denies the nature of the sacrament, 
despite the use of proper matter and form, the sacrament would be invalid. To place the words of consecration under the heading Institution Narrative is an indication of just such a denial. The priest is no longer pronouncing a sacramental formula in the person of Christ. Now he is just reading the story of the Last Supper. There can be no sacrament confected if the priest is only retelling a story. It is at the consecration that the miracle of the Mass occurs. The bread and wine are transformed into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. This is what is meant by Christ's true presence. The general instruction for the new Mass tells us that Christ is really present in the very liturgical assembly gathered in his name, in the person of the minister, in his words, and indeed substantially and continuously under the Eucharistic species. This degrades the doctrine of Christ's true presence in the Eucharist by introducing the idea that Christ is present in many different ways. The modernists who wrote the new liturgy cleverly avoided any clear profession of faith that the bread and wine are transformed into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Instead, the faithful are presented with a choice of different ways in which to understand Christ's presence. Christ is present in the Eucharist the same way he is present in the assembly or in the minister. Remember the dictum, the law of prayer determines the law of belief. A change in the law of prayer necessarily affects a change in belief. It should therefore not surprise anyone that surveys of U.S. Catholics show that 70% do not believe in the traditional Catholic teaching on the Eucharist. The law of prayer determines the law of belief. A change in the prayers of the new Mass has produced an inevitable and predictable change in belief. Oh, Lord, oh,